Hi everybody, it's Steamboat28 here. Um, over the course of the last few weeks and months, I have been repeatedly given one piece of advice uh, from people who ask me for advice uh, or explanations or information on certain topics. They have told me time and again, you should do a um, video series discussing religion somehow, theology or Bible studies or comparative religion or something like that. And with a recent rash of interesting discussions on Facebook where most people don't understand their own religions, much less anyone else's, uh, I thought it might not be a bad idea actually. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I do want to make a statement before we get started. Uh, this is going to be a series by a religious individual um, about religion primarily for other religious people or non-religious people who are interested in religion. Um, so do respect that please uh, in the comments section and where you share these videos and, and things of that nature. Um, I don't mind people who are anti-religion, anti-theist, uh, as opposed to simply atheists and a religious, um, I don't mind them at all. Um, but I don't, at least not since I was about 13 or 14 and young and stupid and really annoying. I don't go into their spaces and tell them why I think, um, religion has a place. Uh, when I interact with people like that, uh, on the topic of religion, it's generally in a public space, it's not their own personal areas of the interbuts. And I consider the comment section here to be my own little personal section of the interbuts. So this is me asking you if you are uh, vehemently anti-religious, if you think religion is dumb and stupid and religious people are all sheep, to please respect us uh, in this area by not voicing those opinions. Um, I will be moderating these comments. And because I'm trying to help religious people understand their religion in a way that will make them more likely and more capable to help the world around them rather than get devolve into petty squabbles, I think really that helps everybody out. Uh, so derailing the comment section is, is not something that I will tolerate lightly. Uh, so be respectful. You're welcome here, but be respectful. So when I first asked about this, squeaky chair, when I first asked about this, um, I didn't know, like, that people were telling me that to do this, this, you should do this thing, you should do this thing, you should do this thing. I said, okay, what do you want me to talk about first? And the very first answer that I got was, why bother? Why bother learning more about religion? Why bother learning about theology? Why bother learning about the whys or the hows of mythology or historical representation or clerical structures or anything like that? Why, why do we even care? Why do we care? And um, there are a lot of really good reasons to care. Uh, one of those reasons is that when you understand the theology of your religion, you understand why it works the way that it does, why it believes what it believes. Uh, the logic, everybody will insist I use air bunnies on that, but religion is highly logical, actually, as far as internally, consistently logical. Maybe not uh, logical by by. Uh, non-religious secular standards, but it is internally logical within itself. It makes sense inside of itself. Every religion does that. It's like how um, Star Trek physics don't work in the real world because Star Trek writers aren't physics people. Like they're not, you know. But but inside of Star Trek, it all works together and makes sense. It's kind of like that. Um, so that's that's basically how how religion functions in that fashion. Um, but when you understand that, you gain a better understanding of what your religion is actually about, what it's asking of you as a person, what it's asking of you as a religious group, what it's asking of you as a um, congregation, a, a faith-based group of people, and what it asks of you as a human. And throughout history, religion has been responsible for a very lot of things. A lot of people will point at violence and things of that nature, but most of the religion, that, most of the violence that is done in the name of religion is actually political violence, not religious violence. Uh, religious violence is actually 
very minor in religious history. Uh, a lot of violence gets blamed on religion, though it actually has political um, driving forces, which is where a lot of people will want to split hairs with me, and, and you're welcome to do that. We'll do that sometime. We'll have a conversation just about that. Um, but religion also has given us uh, community, and uh, there were communities before religion. There were, but there, the communal exercise of religion is a community-building exercise. And prior to the last few hundred years, you would have a very difficult time separating religion from secular community because of its community building nature. Um, it's given us um, a ritual, it's given us, uh, which is which adds structure to our lives and helps us reinforce things like the sacred mundane dichotomy, uh, which is something we'll be talking about later too, it's kind of important. Um, and it, uh, it helps us structure the year so that we have a routine of sorts. There's a really interesting book by uh, Alain de Botton. I think I'm saying that name right. I don't know. It's been a long time since. But anyhow, he um, he did a, a, a TED talk, and there was a book uh, about all of the good things that really. He's a, he's an atheist. And he was telling uh, the book and the TED talk. I'll I'll try to. Uh, give titles and links below because I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, talk about all of the good things that religion does and how atheism in its uh, rush to be separate from religion, to, to separate itself, distinguish itself away from religion as different from religion, has dropped a lot of those good things that religion could offer and that atheism could stand to look at some of those things, strip them of their religious teachings and put them back in because they're so very, very effectful. Effective. Yes, there we go. Effective. Um, so I'll put those down there. And... Uh, um, there's a, there's a lot of reasons that you should you should think about these uh, these things if you especially if you have a religion if you don't have a religion then maybe you're just doing it to understand other people who have a religion um, why they make the decisions they make why they believe what they believe but if you have a religion and you don't understand your religion you're allowing yourself to be controlled by something that you don't fully comprehend if you don't understand the theology of your faith if you don't understand the reasons for what you believe. If you don't understand why those rules are what they are, you're allowing yourself to be controlled by a force outside of you, and you're giving them complete control of your morality, of your um, thought process, of your voting habits, usually, uh, of your social status, uh, things of that nature. Uh, or, you are only paying lip service to that religion which is just as bad in the opposite direction. Um, I would rather have people, a, a, a strong distinction between religious people and non-religious people than to have religious people who are non-religious people. Because I think that if you're going to have a religion, you better have a religion, because that's the point of religion. It's, it's, a, it's a life uh, decision that affects the way that you function. It's an overlay onto your personality. It should inform all of the decisions that you make, but not make those decisions for you. And that's why theology is important. When you understand this theology, the religion stops making these decisions for you. And it starts just being an advisor. And in an advisory capacity, uh, religion can do very little harm for, to a, a rational thinking human mind. Uh, if you are a, a logical individual, if you are a rational person, if you don't have... Um, some of the hang-ups that super zealous, like extremist religious people do, then religion as an advisor is not going to have a negative impact on your life or the lives around you. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that knowledge of theology, you run the risk of allowing it to make your decisions for you, and then you become an extremist zealot and uh, occasionally a bigot, uh, occasionally a xenophobe, occasionally all of these things, all these negative things that we associate with religion are not religion's fault necessarily. They are the fault of the people who don't understand that religion in the manner that they could. Now in some religions, some initiatory religions where there are gates and you have to do this and that and the other to move to the next level and get more knowledge, um, 
that's different. But in a religion like Christianity, where they hand you a book and say, this is the book of all of the words that we know that we have from God. If you don't, like, that's pretty open. That's You can pick that book up and read it. And you can see what that book says. And you can try to thumb through it and, and find the places where you agree and where you have questions. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're basically giving your pastor or your rabbi or your imam or your cleric of choice, whatever uh, name they go by, you're giving them the ability to make all of your decisions for you. And that is dangerous. That is dangerous. There is no religion on the planet that should make your decisions for you. You should make your decisions for yourself. And if you have a religion, you should allow your religion to inform your mor the morality of your choice, to inform the choices of morality that you make, to inform the choices of policy that you make without making those decisions for you. Um, because at the end, at the end of the day, it's just advice. It's religion is advice and you can choose not to take it. And if you don't realize that you have that choice, then the type of religion that you practice is more likely to cause harm to yourself or to others um, than, uh, than it is to help. Uh, and ultimately, ultimately religion is, uh, religion is one of the primary moving factors throughout human history. It's one of the prime shakers and, and, and doers of human history. It's one of the, the main reasons that people do things that they do. Uh, religion is, has informed history, it's informed warfare, it's informed art, it's informed uh, science, it's informed logic, it's informed region, reason. Uh, it's had a hand in everything that humanity has done since the very beginning of, of recorded human history, uh, and even prior to that, uh, we're assuming. Uh, so, why would you not want to understand that? To understand religion is to understand humanity better. Even if it's not your religion, to understand religion is to understand humanity better. And I think that's something we could all use. So join me on this journey. Uh, if you have ideas on talks, uh, topics you'd like to hear about, put them down below. Um, and we'll walk through this uh, together. Cool? Cool.